We're here to answer your game gaming or game night questions. Today's question comes from David Hutchinson, a local Windsor game owner who wrote, Mr. Bellhop, I am looking to buy a board game for my friends and I must buy it at Brimstone Games on account of my sister buying me a gift certificate from them. I'm looking for a cooperative game or a competitive game that is not so cutthroat. Do you have any recommendations for a game? And do you know any sites that I can visit to do further research? Thank you in advance for your help. Signed, Happy Gamer. Happy Gamer. Dave is a happy gamer. He's like, so like out of everyone we ever gamed with, he's like the most just kind of happy go lucky, just there to have fun. Always a friendly face. Well, thanks for the question, Dave. Um, so what Dave's looking for, he's got a $50 gift certificate. And he's got to spend it at a specific store. So for those of you who do want to play along in the chat, I did give you a link to that store's board game selection. He is looking for a board game specifically. He did say I'm looking to buy a board game. So we're not even going to look at RPGs or anything like that. We're just going to look at board games. And now um, he's going to use a gift certificate. So what I did is I went on their site and all I looked at was their site and what was currently in stock. I didn't touch anything else. Um, now, Dave, since I actually sent him this, cause I know he couldn't join us tonight. And Dave was like, Oh no, it could be stuff. I'll order in stuff. And I'm like, well, that's a whole different question. That's, that's <laughs> like what cooperative games can I get for under 50 Canadian, which would have been a totally different topic, but I didn't have time to backpedal at this point. So we're going with that. Now, the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pretend Dave's completely broke. Like all he has is this gift certificate. So for this list, he's got this gift certificate. He's going to go spend 50 bucks. And what should he buy? So the first thing I spotted is he's looking for something cooperative. So what I will note is that the, the group he games with is highly competitive to the point that it can become a problem during game nights. They, they, they get argumentative. So fair enough, they realize this about themselves. So it's always good. Like they've talked about this and they know they can, they can get heated. Discussions can get heated when they play competitive games. So they try to stick to cooperative games. So that makes perfect sense. So my number one recommendation, and, and I know Dave doesn't have this one yet, is Flashpoint Fire Rescue Second Edition. At Brimstone, that'll run you $45.99. So you got a little bit left, but not I couldn't find anything for like four bucks on their site. Like even a said that uh, nothing on their website. Like otherwise, I'd say like throw in a D20 or something too, right? Pick up a die. So Flashpoint, we've mentioned many times in the show before. This is a cooperative game where you play firefighters trying to save um civilians i guess I, I, people from a burning building the board comes with two different sides there is a scaling difficulty level where you have like the easy family game which is actually fairly simple and reminds me of pandemic where you just have four actions every round that include things like using your axe to hack down doors and putting out fires and dragging bodies and then there's an advanced version where you can get stuff like the ambulance to get to different sides or so the fire truck to get to different parts of the building and someone can be on the fire truck and use the fire hose and like it's way more complicated and i honestly think with that group you're going to want to step it up to that advanced version of the game pretty much right away right. so my first recommendation at $45.99 would be Flashpoint Fire Rescue. Uh, technically, it's on the second edition. Now, next up, a great game to work together with people and to also show off a really fantastic game system from mm -hmm. friends uh, Jay and uh, Sen, uh, Jay Cormier and Sen Fulong, or Sen Fuling Lim, the Coded Chronicles game Scooby-Doo Escape from the Haunted Mansion. And we talked mm -hmm. about this game while the follow-up Shining didn't uh, shine as well in our eyes. No. Scooby-Doo Escape from the Haunted Mansion was a fantastic cooperative romp through both Scooby-Doo and a uh, escape uh, room. And that one's only at $34.99. So with that, you can add in the game for $13.59 to fill out your $50 gift card. Yeah, I think Scooby-Doo would be great for this group. Uh, just because they're all role players and there are definitely role playing elements of that game, especially if people get into character and read out their passages as the various characters in the game. And I can totally see that group doing it. And then the game we've talked about on the show before, it sounds simple enough. You were trying to play your cards in order going from one to a hundred or a hundred to one. Uh, but you're not allowed to talk. So you're, this isn't, sorry, that sounds more like the mine. You're, you're, you're playing cards onto a pile. You're not allowed to talk about the cards in your hands. You are allowed to socialize and talk and you're trying to get the cards. So you play them in order with a neat rule that if you use something that's exactly 10 apart, you can jump backwards or forwards, depending on which one you're trying to go through on. 
Like if you're trying to go up, you can jump back. And if you're trying to go down, you can jump up. Really easy, simple to learn, good filler game. And my only issue, and I have no idea how Dave's particular group would feel about this, is Scooby-Doo is only playable once. So if they are looking for a game, they're going to get to the table multiple times. I'm so, so on Scooby-Doo. This is a one-time experience, but I do think they'll have fun with it, especially with Halloween coming up. And I know you're not, most people are probably not going out this year, may or may not be giving out candy. Um, I know that group of gamers is probably not old enough to go out trick-or-treating themselves. So this would be something great for them to play while waiting for kids to show up at the door. Absolutely. All right, the next one I have is the surprisingly cheap Galaxy Trucker. The new printing of Galaxy Trucker that was just released from CGE is only $30.59. That is an incredible price for Galaxy Trucker. That's $30.59 Canadian. So I would get them Galaxy Trucker, and then with the leftover money, I would get D&D Dungeon Mayhem. Now, yes, I know it's not cooperative. It's a competitive game, but it's a light filler card game. And I know Dave's group are huge fantasy RPG fans that are well-versed in the world of Dungeons & Dragons. I do know their particular D&D &D of choice would be Rollmaster, but I know they know all the tropes of D&D &D and would get a kick out of that game. It's a light, fluffy game with a bunch of D&D &D tropes. Now, Galaxy Trucker is a, another silly game, right? Both of these are very lighthearted. In Galaxy Trucker, you are getting together and you are, like, on your own, building a spaceship. And you're drafting tiles to build this spaceship. And then you go out and you go fly the ship to your destination and hope it doesn't blow up on the way. And that's half the fun is meteors come in and you get attacked by aliens and all kinds of horrible things happen. And whoever's ship gets to the destination in the best shape wins the round. You play multiple rounds earning money for each section that makes it back. Extra points for collecting cargo on the way and so on. Again, not cooperative. But the only cutthroatness is maybe drafting a tile someone before someone else, but the tiles are all face down. Like you're literally flipping them over. And if you don't want them, you leave them face up. It's really hard to screw someone over in a game of Galaxy Trucker. It's more of an independent see what happens kind of game. So I think it's on the competitive side, but I think it'd be great for this group just for the silliness factor. Fair enough. Now, next up, we've got a choice to make. And this could be that one of those choices that breaks up a group or everyone all gets together. So we have two legendary encounters boxes to choose from, mm -hmm. both right up there at the tip of the uh, allowable. And actually, one of them is normally above, but it's on discount it's right on now. Sale. So we can go with legendary encounters X Files for forty nine seventy nine, or if you want something a little more quirky and a little less serious, Big Trouble in Little China for forty nine twenty seven all depending on which way your group tends to uh, veer. Yeah, with this particular group of gamers, I couldn't tell you if they're more X-Files fans or Big Trouble in Little China fans. What I did learn is they are absolutely not Star Wars fans because I had a Star Wars game on this list and Dave was like, hell no. I'm like, all right, <laughs> don't like that one. So the Legendary Encounters games, unlike the Legendary Marvel game, are actually cooperative. They are not competitive. They are not a game where you kind of work together to beat the boss, but someone wins. No, in these ones, they are cooperative, except Big Trouble in Little China decided to throw a big battle royal at the end of it just to prove who's the most badass, which I thought was an odd choice. That's a no, unique not aspect to that game. It fits the theme. It fits <laughs> yeah, the yeah. theme. Yep. So in both these games, you are working together to fight enemies coming down a track. If you played any of the legendary games, you know what these are like. I do know this group are big card gamers. They are fans of uh, adventure card games. Uh, they have played through the Pathfinder adventure card game, and they did the Shadowrun adventure card game, and they did the D&D &D one that's based on the Shadowrun one, which I can't remember the name of. So I think these kind of card games are right up their alley. And to be honest, Dave is the person who taught me Marvel Legendary. And one of the things he hated was that competitive, cooperative nature of the game. So strip that out, except for the weird-ass fight at the end of Big Trouble Little China. And I think these are a great recommendation. Fair enough. Now, the last one I've got for Dave is going out on a limb here. I have no idea how this would go over with their group. Um, and that is the Telestrations 12-player party pack which I wish I owned because I only have the eight player version. I wish I had the 12 player version, more books and better markers come in that mine has the big fat ugh, markers that are so hard to draw with. These have little fine point ones, which are still hard to draw with, but they're easier. 
Uh, that comes in at only forty four fifty nine. Again, pick up some card sleeves or some dice or something to go with it. Um, this could be great. Uh, th this is the game I I don't think any other game in my entire collection I have laughed so much at, at, at while playing. Uh, most of the time that's probably because it's at three a.m. But like I have broke this out at New Year's or in the middle of an afternoon and played it. The game always has laughs. Um, well, yes, it does reward some drawing ability but that's not the important thing the important thing is being able to get a message across in a short period of time so illustration the drawing game it's a party game this group sometimes i think needs something like this after they play that competitive game and everyone wants to kill each other they should all just sit down and play telestrations the 12 player party pack and relax after a a rousing game of something more competitive absolutely yeah, uh, telestrations. Uh, we will, and then now uh, this is telestrations, not telestrations upside drawn. Telestrations, mm -hmm. twelve player party pack, not other telestrations. Oh, wow, I, <laughs> I, I, no, I'm, I'm picturing some people in that game group playing telestrations upside drawn, and I, I cannot recommend that one. So now we, we kind of made this artificial in a way, right? Because who has a gift certificate? And no extra money, right? Like gift certificate, fifty dollars gift certificate means fifty dollars off. Not I can only spend fifty dollars. So my actual biggest recommendation for Dave is to spend some of his own cash. Actually, not a small amount of his own cash, but would be to pick up the Marvel Champions box set, the big new living card game from Fantasy Flight, where you get a number of heroes in the box and a number of villains, and every hero has their own deck. It's themed to them with unique abilities to that hero. Like the Ant-Man deck has you play a tableau where it builds and grows. Like that's just fantastic. There's some really great stuff here. This is considered by many the best um, living card game published so far. It is cooperative. You each pick your hero and you pick a villain to fight against. I know Dave's group was a huge fan of other adventure card games. And I think this is kind of the Marvel next step to that. I think this is... Rating wise and popularity, a step above the Shadowrun game and the Pathfinder one. This seems to have more staying power. Now, the other one I would recommend is Jaws of the Lion for Gloomhaven, because I know they finished Gloomhaven, and like they finished Gloomhaven, <laughs> like like they they did the main story and then went back and they unlocked every character type and they picked up the the Fallen Circle or whatever the thing i haven't picked up the actual expansion for gloomhaven i think jumping back and then doing jaws of lion could be a lot of fun for this group especially because it's lighter it's less quarterbacking it's less arguing and less optimization i think it'd be more fun for this group than gloomhaven even was yeah no absolutely i there's definitely uh you know some strength to even if you have finished gloomhaven jaws of lion is still a good game I mean, mm -hmm. there's just no reason to ignore it, even though technically it's the precursor to, uh, and That's we do, and we wise. do recommend, we do recommend people buy Jaws of the Lion first because of the totally onboarding, is. but there's no reason you can't go back to it after finishing Gloom. The other one I would recommend too is I know they played some of the Pandemic Legacies. I don't know which. So whatever the next one is, I would also right. recommend because Pandemic Legacy Season 2 is significantly different from Season 1. And Season Zero, which is actually the third game, but is actually a prequel, kind of like Jaws of the Lion, is completely different. Like, it, it barely uses the pandemic mechanics. That's another one I think you that group could all enjoy playing together. But again, it's over the $50 mark. That's a, that's a you're going to have to spend some extra money. So next up, we decided we were going to see what we would spend. Or fifty dollars, you know, if we had if we had a fifty dollar uh, gift certificate burning a hole in our pockets, where would we go to, uh, and what would we pick up from Brimstone? And to be honest, I wish I had a fifty dollar gift certificate <laughs> right now because there's some stuff here I would definitely buy. Yeah, no. I'm so sure. the first one I found when looking for games for Dave, and I would have recommended for him until I found out they are not Star Wars fans, which I I don't know what's going on there. <laughs> um, is the Unlock Star Wars game? So the Unlock games are escape room in a box games that are card driven and app driven, where you're scanning cards and doing stuff. I admit I have not played one. I tried. I, I reached out to him and said, look, I've been reviewing Exit games from Ravensburger. Let me compare your games to Exit. And they, they weren't willing to work with us. I think because we were in Canada. It wasn't like they don't like me. And well, what they started doing is they were the games used to be, I think they were $10 each, but they were smaller than the Exit games. Well, what they've done now 
is they bundle them in groups of three. And I, again, $10 would have been, I think, maybe there are 15 each, whatever. They're, they were slightly cheaper than exit games with smaller boxes. Well, now they package them three at a time. And originally they released as an EU exclusive a Star Wars three pack. So three different Star Wars exit games all in one box. Well, that's finally, it seems, over here in North America, because, well, at least Brimstone can get a copy for $47.99. So that only leaves you with two bucks and a penny left. Uh, I couldn't find anything on the site at that price point to, to, that I would have picked up. So I'd have $2 and a cent off the next time I'm in there if I want to buy a chocolate bar for playing games or something. So my number one pick, actually, to be honest, these aren't in any order. My number one pick is actually probably the next one. Uh, one of the things I would consider picking up is the unlocked Star Wars three pack. Now, for me, the first thing that I caught my mind, and this again, these aren't in order; these aren't favored or anything. But the first sort of fifty dollar combo that uh, that caught my mind was a combination of Sushi Go, mm -hmm. uh, because I've just been playing that a lot, and I think that's something that the family would probably throw down and play just light and easy all the time. Uh, so Sushi Go, along with One Deck Dungeon. Uh, I do play the digital version, but I would actually really enjoy, like to play yeah. the physical version of it um, and, and explore that one as well. So One Deck Dungeon for $26.59 and Sushi Go for $19.99 gives you uh, $46.58. So you got a little bit of change left over. Pick up some dice. Yep. All right, the next one kind of goes back to uh, our questions, our, our our suggestion box at the top of the episode. Uh, for those of you listening to the full episode of our podcast here or watching it on YouTube. Um, and that is the Quacks of Quedlinburg, the Alchemist expansion. Now, honestly, I would have went with the Herb Witches expansion, but it was currently out of stock. So I couldn't put that one on my list because I said this was as of their stock status on the website this morning and yesterday because I was on both days. So the Alchemist expansion for Quacks of Quedlinburg, which runs $45.59. So it leaves me with $4.41 left over to, I don't know, uh, pick up some dice or a dice bag or something. Um, I, I want all the expansions for Quedlinburg. And as far as I can tell, Alchemist can be standalone. Like you can use just Alchemist in Quedlinburg. You don't need Herb Witches to be able to use Alchemist. So this would tie me over till Christmas when hopefully I'll get Herb Witches. There you go. And now the next one. I was realizing, you know, we've talked about Sushi Go in this show many times, but everyone always says, if you're going to get Sushi Go, you should get Sushi Go Party. Mm -hmm. But it's a little more expensive. So if you're going to go with Sushi Go Party, get something else a little fun and go with the mind. So for the Sushi Go Party at $33.99 and the mind at $13.99, that comes out to $47.98. And uh, that isn't even many uh, sleeves left at that rate. No. <laughs> I suddenly feel like we're on prices right all of a sudden. With the, the, who's closest to the price of going over? Uh, next one for me is a game I have wanted since the first time I got to try it, which was a demo at Breakout Con. Uh, Sean tried it, I think, at the exact same time. Didn't we yeah, I never down? actually tried it. I oh, never it was got, Deanna. Yeah. Deanna and I sat down and, then, and did a demo of it. And that is Planet from Blue Orange Games. This is a game where you were handed a big plastic D12 that has magnets on it and you have, or I think metal plates, and then you have a bunch of magnets that are different biomes that you use to build your planet, trying to make um, a habitable, habitable world for the animal cards that are up. And the animal cards change every game. So like one animal might be score the number of different biomes and another one might be for your largest desert or whatever. And the impressive part in that game is you get to see ahead. So it's all, not just about placing the right tile for now. It's also about planning ahead for those longer turns and the long-term strategy. I, this is way deeper than it should be. I see people recommending this as a kid's game, and I'm like, no, I can see playing this with 18xx gamers. Like, there, there's enough strategy in this game that I think players of all ages will dig it. Now, yes, you could play with kids who just kind of do it and just focus on what they have to score now, but, like, the real joy I had with that game was playing it the second time, like the first time seeing just how much that end games, well, not end game scoring, later game scoring mattered. So at 4059, leaving me with 947 for a set of Chessex dice would be Planet from Blue Orange Games. Nice. Uh, I actually also went with a, uh, found a solo, uh, sing one single game for the, uh, with, to fill out on my third slot. And that one is Azul Summer Pavilion, uh, which is, again, the second best, I think, game. Azul is great. Azul Summer Pavilion is fantastic. 
Azul stained glass, yeah. Um, it has its ups and downs. Uh, but Azul Summer Pavilion at forty eight fifty nine is a solid deal for a really really enjoyable game. Yeah. No, I I I cannot fault you for that one. And to be I would fair, be on my list if I didn't have it. To be fair, I would consider that one lightly competitive and possibly even something that Dave and his the the Dave's group could go for. Hey, worry about the hate drafting. Mm. heat drafting from that market in azul can get nasty that, that's that's what i worry about now now some of pavilion is the least yeah because that's... there's that bonus market where you can still get the tiles right but it, i don't know that 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 one aspect of the game is what i worry about sure my next possible cart would include mariposas and the mind extreme mariposas is the not the second game by elizabeth hargrove but her follow-up wingspan right? the, the the first game she released after her big hit of wingspan she did um cussy musky before wingspan which i hear is really good mary poses honestly is something that interests me because it happens to be that living in windsor essex we're actually right along the monarch butterfly migration that happens every year and one of the things i remember doing as a kid is going to point peely provincial park to go see the monarchs so I have a tie to this game because that's what Mary Postus is about, is about the Monarch migration every year. I've heard it's a really good game. It's rather nice looking, though kind of abstract. Um, nice cards, not not as much uh, hype as there is out there for Wingspan, but I hear it's actually a really solid game. The Mind Extreme is not just the way we played the Mind the first time, but a new, more difficult version and quicker version of the Mind. I'm a big fan of the Mind. I have not played Extreme, but you know what? With the money I have left over from Mariposas, I'm more than willing to give it a shot and see how it compares to the original. Fair enough. Now, the next one I went with is uh, arguably a questionable choice. Uh, we don't like to necessarily talk about uh, this as much as we once did for various reasons, but Hogwarts Battle Charms and Potions expansion is the one that I'm still missing, and it's a game my kids still love. Yep. So problematic or not, the game exists and it's on shelves. Um, and again, we really enjoy the game and the theme of it. Uh, and then that one is at forty one ninety nine, which gives just enough for another sort of small game left center right tin for 7.99 bringing in a total of 49.98 for two games the personally the questionable one there is left center right in my opinion because <laughs> to be honest hogwarts it's already the distributor already had it it's already been purchased by the game store at this point the problematic person has already been paid for it so fair enough and your kids enjoy the game and that's actually what's more important now, Left Center Right, I personally think is a terrible game. It's all horrible. It's pure random. Uh, it's it, The only reason it becomes a game is because you put betting. You have to add betting to it to make it a game. And even then, it's still random. It's, but at least a betting element makes it a challenge or something. Something for the kids in the back seat. Yeah, I guess. Because <laughs> the tin, you can do uh, you can do it portable. So oh, there the, you go. The tin yeah, makes I'm, it a good You know what? Game. Kids would probably like it. At least it's not determined at the start of the game. It's just 100% random. Literally, 100% yeah, yeah. random. There is There are no actual decisions really made in lcr yeah all right my final shopping cart from brimstone games would be a copy of just one and a copy of age of war both games we have recommended and have been on honorable mention lists on various game uh suggestion episodes of ours because i don't own them uh just one being the party game where you're trying to guess a clue and everyone's giving in one word clues but if you duplicate a clue it's eliminated because that's why it's the just one you can only have one clue one of each clue so it may be if you're trying to guess chocolate and someone says ice cream, ice cream, ice cream, candy bar, candy bar, you now have to guess chocolate with absolutely zero clues whatsoever. Uh, it sounds like a lot of fun. I've heard really good things. Age of War is um, the, the dice rolling Yahtzee style game where you're rolling dice and you get to re-roll up to two times. You place the dice on cards. And when you fill a card with a die, with all the dice, you get to claim it. Um, very similar to King of the Dice or Roll for it. But this one has a samurai theme uh, with some little additional rules where you have to complete battles in certain orders and so on. It's a really basic system. I've seen in a number of games, but this is one of the ones that I find does it better than the others, especially with, I, I dig the theme of samurais. So that is my final shopping cart using $50 Canadian at Brimstone Games. And to wrap up for me, I decided I wanted to go with something outside the box, something on that list that I didn't really know about, but but looked pretty solid from a quick glance of Board Game Geek. 
uh, one of the things that Dave asked about was, you know, where else can we go? And mm-hmm. Board Game Great Geek is a pretty solid way, uh, if perhaps slow, to go through <laughs> if you, <laughs> you've got to go through enough games. But uh, I have seen this game before, and I checked out, and it looks interesting enough, and that is Holly Festival of Colors, representing the Indian Festival of Colors with the uh, the powdered colors mm-hmm. everywhere. And that comes in at forty six fifty nine, and seemed like a solid uh, idea for if you're going to go, you know, right out of the blue, let's pick something that we don't know. Mm-hmm. Holly Festival of Colors was it. Yeah, that one definitely caught my eye. I don't know much about it, but it does look like a solid game. Ratings aren't terrible. Yeah. So now there is one other part of Dave's question Sean just kind of alluded to where he said, do you know of sites where I can visit to do further research? Well, one of the best sites I hear that's out there on the internet is tabletopbellhop.com. If you go there, there's people talking about all kinds of gaming recommendations, including cooperative games and party games and best games and best games for under $50. Though in that case, it was about U.S., Now, we know and love that site really well. It's near and dear to our heart. There is, of course, as Sean mentioned, Board Game Geek and its newest competitor, Board Game Atlas. Now, Board Game Atlas has a feature that you don't see on Board Game Geek that I kind of dig and I'm now involved with, so there's a bit of disclosure there, is when you bring up a game there, they show everyone's review of the game underneath, and what they have is a set of what they call featured reviewers, I think. I'm forgetting the term. Uh, They have a set of featured reviewers, and, well, I'm one of those. But so is Tom Vassell, so is Rado. Like there's a bunch of well-named board game reviewers who have become members of that site, were invited, they sent us invites. We were not compensated for this, nor were they getting anything for us except links to our review. Accredited, there you go, accredited reviewers, they call it. So if you bring up a game there, you'll get to see the top three reviews from accredited reviewers and then everyone else's review in an aggregate. So what this site's trying to do a little more than Board Game Geek is be an aggregate of reviews from multiple places instead of just being a rating of one to 10. Plus it's more granular. Everything's rated one to a hundred. So that is the other place I would recommend. So tabletopbellhop.com, board game Atlas and board game geek. Interestingly, when you actually go to the pages on board game Atlas, uh, while accredited, I believe really was the correct term. uh, They call them under the, under the game, they call them critics and community. Okay. So critics. Yeah. Is it accredited critics? Accredited critics. Sorry. Nope, it's so just critics. <laughs> so Tom Vassell, Richard Ham, you know. Yeah, it's Grotto. Yeah. What's weird is it oh yeah, they don't say I'm accredited here. Yeah. Even the link you sent, D, it says board game review critics. Mm-hmm. So they took out the accredited term. Well, but I when guess I joined, it said accredited. Yeah. So I guess they accredited a bunch of people and then locked it down, maybe. Who knows? Oh wow, we have 26 followers there. We mm. are not the bottom of the pile. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, head over to Board Game Atlas to their critics page and give us a follow. That's that's kind of strange that they were to do it that way. So yeah, and, and otherwise, the one thing I did find a problem with Brimstone site is you can filter by keyword, but it filtered by cooperative and it only showed four games. So whoever did their keyword like ranking or whatever obviously didn't do it. I doubt they did it manually. It's probably something automatic from their distributor or something, it did not list all of the cooperative games. Right. The Pandemic Legacy wasn't even there. Mm, that's a shame. And, well, honestly, like almost any board game site, go on Amazon and you can filter by... Uh, no, board game... Amazon, I don't think, does filter by cooperative. Mm, you could try. Again, I... Yeah, I don't think yeah, it does. Yeah, I'd... Uh, other, <laughs> other selling sites, but like Board Game Geek's your best bet, right? Go to Board Game Geek, click on Mechanic Cooperative, sort by rating... Look at the top. You can't sort by price. That's your. That's what you're not going to get from Board Game Geek, but you are going to get from Board Game Atlas because Board Game Atlas does list online game prices. But those will be in American. So yeah. well, no, there's a Canadian. You can oh. click the Canadian oh, button excellent. and then oh, browse everything Canadian. You can also do EU or Australia or Germany. It's they are they are trying to be a competitor from Board Game Geek. Right. I, I think there's even a way to log your collection. It's I haven't dived into that those aspects of this. All right. I think that's it. I hope Dave found some games to go shopping for. Um, The actual comment I got from Dave was, we'll bring this to the group and see what they have to say. So I'm actually looking forward to what what we'll do is if I do get feedback from Dave, we'll follow up on a uh, future suggestion box segment, uh, find out what Dave bought. And remember, if you've got a game or game night question for us, head over to the website and click on Ask the Bellhop.